Aloha, I am your host, Winston Welch, and I'm delighted that you are joining us again today for this special edition of Out and About, where every other week we explore a variety of topics, organizations, and events with the people who fuel them in our city, state, country, and world. As a disclaimer, any views or opinions expressed by me are mine and mine alone and not connected with any organization. Joining me in the studio today, I am delighted to have Gary Powell, the Executive Director of the Caregiver Foundation. Welcome to the show and thank you for, um, for coming. Thank you for having me. So we met at the Hawaii Disabilities uh, Conference, was that where, yes. where it was? And you had a wonderful display there and I just assumed you were the national representative for this organization and I pretty much found that this is a local organization. This so is a local, uh, local tell, uh, What is the Caregiver Foundation? The Caregiver Foundation is a not-for-profit based here in Hawaii that serves seniors and disabled adults. Literally every aspect of life you can imagine from managing finances to coordinating care, any kind of care someone might need, right? Disability care, uh, you've got conservatorships, guardianships, trusteeships, all the way through death, burial, and estate distribution. So part of the whole journey. And also uh, the, the emphasis on caregiver, yep. so you also uh, have a big role in supporting the folks that are giving care as well? Absolutely. Caregivers, all of us are caregivers in one way or another. Either we have been, we're going to be, we need the care, or someday somebody's going to be lining up for care right around us. So somewhere in our lives, caregiving will touch us. And Tell us about the history of this organization. How, did, how is it that you, um, that you founded the organization? I did. I've always seemed to be caring for someone. When I was 13, my grandfather had a series of strokes. And one of my jobs as the youngest grandchild was come home from school and take him down to the beach to walk in the sand to strengthen his legs. I had no idea it was caregiving. I was taking grandpa for a walk. Did that for several years until he passed away. And I was taking care of grandma. And then one thing led to another and there was another person and another person. Every job I've ever had had a caregiving component to it. So finally one night, my wife turns to me and she says, you know, you're in financial services. It doesn't thrill you. But the only time you come home happy is when you've sort of undone somebody else's sale because it wasn't an appropriate product for the senior or that disabled person. If you're not going to get paid anyway, let's just do what makes you happy. So we started this foundation in 11 years now. I think it's the best job I could have ever had. That's really a wonderful, uh, wonderful that you have a spouse that recognized that in you. I'm and, very lucky. Yeah, and, and, and supportive as well to say, let's, let's do what you're really called to do, what, what you've been called to do, mm -hmm. and that you, that you have a natural affinity for and, and a gift for, for helping people in these situations. And so it's only 11 years old, but you've been doing it all, I've almost been doing all your it life. practically my whole life, but the organization, Caregiver Foundation, is 11 years old. Okay, and so you have a, the way that it works is you have a fee-for-service model, is that right? Yes, we're kind of unique among not-for-profits. We have a fee schedule because we are a self-sustaining organization. We don't depend on grants, although we would like them because it helps us expand and do other projects. But we know that when we make a promise to help someone, when they need the help, it becomes help that's needed more and more, not less and less. So if we, for instance, were taking care of someone's finances, their caregiver had called us in, couldn't handle the money side of things, we start handling it. A few years down the road, we can't just suddenly say, well, we didn't get the grant this year, sorry, you've got to take care of it yourself. So we created this self-sustaining model, and it works very well. So we're able to grow slowly, but continuous self-sustaining growth. And are these, are, is the way that you're funded by your clients or by the government? Or, uh... It's by the clients or their families. Okay, so they might say, um, for example, give us a, a, a typical um, case that might come across your, oh. your desk. Recently, a caregiver, a long-distance caregiver, and don't let anybody tell you that 2,000 miles or more erases caregiving from right. your life. Yeah. That's not so. 
Yep. Well, we got a call from a son and a daughter on one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast. And guess where mom lives? Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. And mom does not want to move. They don't have the ability to just give up their lives and come home. So they called and said, can we go see what's happening? We went, we talked with mom. Mom needs a little bit of help. She certainly needs help with her finances because she's doing what so many older folks do. She's writing checks to these different charities and different magazine subscriptions and you know, spending far more than she should. So we're able to take that burden from those kids thousands of miles away and become their hands while they can maintain that love relationship and not worry about the day to day. And so you might come in and say, you're going to pay the mortgage on time, make sure that all the bills for the insurance and the gas and, um, and the taxes, we just taxes. finished tax season. That's always a huge issue with people. Tax season. And then, uh, and then you provide a very transparent accounting to Absolutely. the families and to your clients as well, the end client. Yes. Um, in, in that case, are you, are you enlisting the, uh, something like a senior attorneys for that and that sort of thing? Or uh, how is that? How, we, have a, we have a 15 member board and for a small organization like ours, that's, that's, a, lot. that's a lot of people. Yeah. They're all professional people, lawyers, attorneys, doctors, so that we have a built in filtering and oversight board watching everything that's going on. And when I need advice from somebody, all I have to do is pick up the phone, call a board member, and I can get that advice quickly and effectively. Transparency is really, really important, especially because we deal with so many people with mental illnesses. And when age and mental illness combine, you have a real problem. So when you're working with families trying to provide care for that sort of individual, sometimes that individual perhaps shouldn't have that information, but their family certainly should have that information and be able to oversee what's going on. But you're typically working with someone who maybe has a power of attorney or something along those lines? Yes, sometimes we will actually take that position. We're called into a lot of cases by the Adult Protective Service, so there is nobody <clears throat> actively involved, or if they're involved, they're involved in the wrong way. Yes. So we will serve as guardian, conservator, trustee, durable power of attorney, healthcare power of attorney, those positions that sometimes families have conflict over. And by having a third neutral party involved, the caregiver can, as I said, go back to being the caring, loving family member and stop fighting about the money. And they might be fighting with their siblings, siblings. about that or what's an appropriate level of care for, for mom or, yes. or for our brother or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And um, in that way, like you said, yes, they can just go back to you know, being the son, being the daughter, being the friend, being the loving, being the spouse, person right whatever there. it is. Because a lot of people, they, I mean, even if you have all these capabilities, like your doctors, lawyers, and, uh, you know, uh, specialists that you have on your board, even if you did have that ability, when you're adding this extra dimension of caregiving on that, where do you find the time to deal with that? That's and it. Competent? It's, it's really hard. My, my own aunt is in a nursing facility. And making that move brought up emotions in me, just like it is in every other person that I work with. And when she went on hospice and I had to sign that document, it really bothered me to know that I was doing that for her, knowing that that could be the last time that I sign a document affecting her overall life. So just because you do this kind of work, you're not immune to the emotions, to the stress, um, to the anger, sorrow, all of the emotions that come. That's one of the reasons that we sponsor uh, caregiver support groups. Uh, they're so important. A good doctor, if you are a caregiver, will prescribe that you go to a caregiver support group. That's a really good point. I don't think that most people think about having that being prescribed, but it's almost as important as prescribing time away and sitting it under is. a tree. But it, in this case, with other folks who are going through the same yep. thing and realizing you, there's no way you can know it all right. and just sharing with your peers. And just being able to express yourself openly, honestly, knowing that nobody is going to be looking at you like, oh, that sounds mean. Yeah. Why are you talking like that? Yeah. Uh, you can express your anger, your sorrow. It's so important, even though it's maybe just once a month or a couple of hours, the difference that makes in people's 
caregiving lives and overall life is just tremendous. This is such, uh, and that's why when we met, I just thought, oh boy, this has to be a national thing. It's so critical out there that this is, this is just a, a, a natural for, for that. And are there other things like this on the mainland? There are some organizations that do parts of what we do. I don't know of another organization that does the comprehensive nature of work that we'll undertake. What sort of um, organizations are you a member of in the mainland that would be connected with this work? We're uh, members of the American Association of Daily Money Managers, the National Guardianship Association, National Association for Mental Illness. Uh, gosh, there's a whole long list of different organizations that we belong to, that we follow and coordinate with. One of the nice things we're able to do is to uh, ask someone that needs help to give us their zip code. That's it. Just call up, give us your name, give us your zip code, tell us what the situation is. We can usually find some organization near you, or at least a support group near you, to so our you, network, and we will put you in touch with them. So you may get calls from folks that are watching this uh, in Iowa and say, wow, we totally need that. And they can reach you via your website, which is... Uh, the caregiverfoundation.org the caregiverfoundation.org yes. okay and, and and on there you have a whole a, a wonderful website filled with many many resources that are just super impressive and obviously that you've uh, had to build up over the years um, yes because you're asked the same questions again and again yes and we try to co uh, collaborate so there are lots of links to other organizations and other publications that we feel can be of real help we don't believe in rebuilding the wheel. If you have a good wheel, we're just going to make a little bridge over to it and suggest someone check out that information. If people wanted to, what would you say your client breakdown is as far as um, developmentally disabled adults versus, uh, would it be seniors or, or those that are, how do you classify, how do you break down your, the clients that you serve? I would say that... Uh, 75% of our clients are seniors. 25% would be either developmentally disabled adults, physically disabled adults, or adults with a mental illness. So it might be that one of the parents, they have a child with Down syndrome, for example, mm -hmm. and they're getting older. and they, they are really concerned about what to deal with their yeah. their child. Is, would that be a, a case? That's a very typical case, and it's such an important thing. As parents who've been providing the protection, the love, everything for that person, that uh, child with Down syndrome, that adult with child with Down syndrome, when the parents die, the need doesn't go away. No. But no. if the parents do not prepare and utilize something like a special needs trust or some legal structure to make sure that there is adequate resource to take care of that child, uh, that person's going to have a really tough life. We do not have good overall social services to step in and take care of someone with special needs. Yeah, which is why your, your foundation is so important, the Caregiver Foundation. Uh, there's a plethora of resources on there. I want to talk later about how you fit all these pieces together, case management, and go over some specifics of what you, what you deal with uh, after a break that we, that we okay. have to take. But for those of you that are at home, we are talking with Gary uh, uh, Powell from the Caregiver Foundation. He's executive director. And you're based out of, is it Waialua or? Wahiwa. Wahiwa. Okay, up where there's a beautiful botanical garden, which incredibly I just went to for the first time this week. Um, but highly recommended. I don't know if you've ever gone it's there. It's gorgeous. Gorgeous. So I am Winston Welch. We will be back in about a minute. This is Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. And or during a break, either watch the commercial or go to www.caregiverfoundation.org so you can join in on the discussion in a minute. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters.
Aloha. Aloha. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Aloha, we're back. We're live. I'm Winston Welch, and this is Out and About on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. And we are delighted to be talking with Gary Powell, Executive Director of the Caregiver Foundation today. Really important work that Gary and his team were able to do. Uh, go to www.thecaregiverfoundation, with the word the in front of it, dot org for more information while we talk with Gary. So, again, thank you for coming down here and sharing a, a bit about your your foundation here, there's a ton of, of resources on your website. When someone comes to you, is it typically that person himself or herself, the senior, or is it a child or a concerned niece or um, be a neighbor? Or? It's usually a concerned individual because dementia is such a, a problem in the aging community. Rarely will you get somebody that actually needs help recognize that they need that help. Mm -hmm. But usually someone else recognizing the need and coming to us and saying, what can you do? And is it a case where something, maybe someone's become like a hoarder or they're not going to their medical appointments or they're writing checks, like you said, to everybody that sends them money in the mail and you know it's, it's like feeding birds once you give to one uh, organization, <laughs> they, they sell it. That's they sell absolutely your, true. Your, your name, yeah. yeah. It's all of the above. Every detail, uh, it amounts, so much of it amounts to abuse. Mail abuse, getting these things in the mail that look like a paycheck. You get a credit card offer that says you have up to $5,000. Well, a lot of times someone with dementia will look at that and say, oh, I have $5,000. Yeah. They don't read the fine print. How often do you get it in there where there's someone saying, I'm afraid that Mrs. Tanaka's being taken advantage of uh, financially or maybe uh, no, physically abused by her, her child or her nephew At or something like that? At least 30% of the time. Oh, so it's quite high. It's very high. And in those cases, what would you do? Would you go out to the house and say, we're here with the Caregiver Foundation? Would you bring along caseworkers from um, Health and Human Services or the police? Or how, well, how does it, that work? It really depends. We will try and make an initial assessment ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if you were to come to me and say, my neighbor seems to be, something's not right there, mm -hmm. something's going on. We usually try and go just knock on the door and say, hi, I'm Gary with the Caregiver Foundation, and do a visual assessment. If we think that the case looks very serious, then as an official mandated reporter, we'll contact the Adult Protective Service. They have their hands tied for most cases because there has to be actual visible abuse for them to be able to take action or have the individual say, yes, please come help me. So sometimes you have to work very hard to get other people involved. So sometimes it's a different family member that you can get involved. If the case looks like there is nobody helping and there is fraud going on, sometimes we can actually go to court and take guardianship or conservatorship. We'll explain to the court what's going on, let them do an investigation, and if they feel it's appropriate for us to serve in that legal capacity, We'll step in and do that. That then will give us the ability to help this person find a safe place to live. We'll be able to manage their assets so that they aren't being taken advantage of. Give them a quality of life that perhaps they're looking for but don't even understand how to find anymore. Do you go in after you've, you've, you've established that you're going to be in these folks' lives? Do you go in with the team then of people? Is it three or four people that are on the team? One is managing health care, one is managing finances. Um, we usually coordinate that type of thing in. They're not necessarily working for us, but if we feel that there are caregivers that need to come in, we'll work with one of the agencies that we have a good history with and have a caregiver come in through that agency. Uh, we'll work with the financial services, that aspect we do in-house. That's a very critical area that has to be handled exactly right. Um, but if the house needs repair or the yard needs cleaning or they need cooking or they need 
transportation to medical appointments, all of that we coordinate and make sure that it's happening. So we're kind of like the family that they should have, if they could have, we step in and be that. You're the one-stop shop then for people that Very can much come so. there. Um, including, but not limited to as well, advanced care directives yes. um, and medical, uh, medical directives and, and end-of-life wishes as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, yes. So it might even be someone who comes to you and says, I don't have any close um, relatives or family members, and I want to know that I'm going to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So in that case, they can say, please, here's my situation. You step in and right. you assume that responsibility. And we have a program we call it, uh, just call it standby assistance. We don't know what else to call it. But basically, we get all kinds of legal paperwork and all the documents, birth certificates, everything we can think of that this person might need at some point in their aging life. We get all of that on file and then we check with them at least once a year. How are things going? Do they need any extra help? Anything going on? And they have a number they can call 24 hours a day if they needed help. But otherwise, we stay out of their hair. So it's sort of a proactive service that's a st standby. What do you call it? Standby? We call it standby, just a standby service. So the day that person has a stroke, God forbid, but if they did, the hospital already knows that we're the advanced health care directive for that individual. Oh, that's a great peace of mind. They're not paying their bills. The phone company already has us on their account as an authorized person. They give us a call and say, what's going on? Now we know it's time to step in because they didn't know to tell us. The individual didn't tell us that they were having trouble with their financial bill paying or something like that. When people engage your services, is, how do they know what the fees will be in advance? Or is it something that they have to... We have Discuss a published fee schedule that we have everybody go over, and we go over it with them. We show them how other cases have developed. Mm -hmm. Cases very often in the early days cost much more than they do going on. Because it takes a lot setting everything up. Because of up. the initial setup. Right. But once it's going, then we're the coordinator. So we may bring in a caregiver to help you, and that's charging their rate. We don't have a rate that we put on top of that. The only thing that would be paid for is the time we spent arranging it and overseeing it. So someone like the standby thing, it might be someone who's 60 years old and just yep. says, I want to get this taken care of just like you would with anything and say, I want this in place so that yes. when it happens at 60, 70, 80, 90, 120, yes. or 130, my plan and personally even if it doesn't is 130 happen. at least. 130, you got me beat by 10. You want to do 120? Yeah, I figure <laughs> by the time that we need it, we're going to be... You would take a pill and grow a new liver, kidney, <laughs> heart. <laughs> Maybe it'll put the, our brains back together and, um, yeah, all of that. But uh, <laughs> I have great faith in medical science. But regardless of, of that, all of us have a number written in the sky as to when that's going to come. So it's, this, is, this is really comforting uh, to me to see that we have this. Uh, Hawaii has so many amazing things out there that uh, the other states and cities don't have. We're, yes. we're far advanced in, in so many ways here. Sometimes we're not as advanced, but... In many ways, I think we are really advanced, and this is one of them. You have plans to roll this out nationally. Is this something that, that you, you know, you're looking at? We would like to. We've been approached by several states to start chapters there, <clears throat> but I need to find the right people. Uh, we want it done exactly the same way. We don't want it changed up to become some business, something out in another state where, oh, you have to have a million dollars before we can do business with you or right. your net worth has to be. A lot of our clients run out of money. How does that work then? We have what we call our Pulama Aloha Fund, and that's where we raise funds. That's where grants and donations and bequests, some people leave us a house or things they don't have somebody else to leave it to. They put it in that Pulama Aloha Fund, and we use those funds to underwrite people who run out of their own funds. You're a 501c3 then? Yes, absolutely. So if I want to donate to you, it is tax deductible to the full, full extent, extent of the law? Of the law. And yeah. uh, to talk to your accountant about that. But mm -hmm. wonderful, uh, obvious charity uh, to, uh, to leave assets to. And I think, especially if you've been taking care of people um, yeah. in this capacity, then they think this is a wonderful organization that's, that's supported me that I would like to support after I'm no longer here. And, and, mm -hmm. and that, I imagine, happens fairly frequently. It does. We don't go out there and ask for it a lot. Right. Um, just because we have trouble going out and asking. 
and and I could see that some people would would want to make sure that this is the wish of the Absolutely. of the of the of the person, so you can have some. Um, yeah, you want to make sure that that's exactly buttoned down. But I can see where this would be exactly something where people. One want of the to things that we do is work closely with this the individuals existing or previous advisors. Mm -hmm. So if you'd had an attorney that you worked with for 40 years and suddenly you're not because your memory's gone, or a CPA that you used to have do all your taxes, we'll try to go back to that person and have them pick it back up. I already know the history. They can gain confidence in what we're doing. And then it just we become you in that respect. You're not looking to go in and changing someone's will. If they want not to leave it all, all the goodwill of Salvation Army, you're leaving it as that. Absolutely. You're just helping with the execution of that. Absolutely. And although yeah. some people who have their, their right minds may decide that this is... They, they might. And, there's, and, and that's I, fine. And I'm, I, I'm sure you have, you're, you're right in the thick of things with different family members, and probably some family members think, oh, mom doesn't need that. She's fine with me doing it or... Mm -hmm. or Sometimes we're working with the caregivers, the caregiving family, and helping them figure out how best to structure a, uh, an inheritance. Uh, inheritance, I mean, you've got the, the whole thing on here. I just am uh, going to quickly read off these different categories that you cover. Aging, Alzheimer's disease and dementia, alcohol and drug abuse and misuse, which is seniors are a big category in that. Assistive technologies like reading devices caregiving, disabilities, driver safety for seniors, elder abuse, end-of-life care, family caregiving, financial matters, grief support, health issues, housing, incontinence, legal matters, long-term care, meal services, mental health care, recreation, spiritual, uh, spirituality, wheelchairs, and other things yes. that are not here, like, uh, like you said, your standby program. This is an uh, a incredible program that you have here, Gary, uh, that Really blessed to have you as executive director and founder. You're obviously a kind, gentle, spirited person that's perfectly suited for this. Well, um, I really appreciate being here. Well, I, I appreciate you coming down. And, and if people want to know more information, they can go to your website, which is thecaregiverfoundation.org. Exactly. And uh, will you come back again so we can explore some to. of these other issues in, in more depth? Because obviously we've just been able to talk about the very top of them, but it's a very... Uh, critical and important work that you do and um, really requires a lot of aloha. Uh, obviously have an abundance. Of, I'm sure that your, your staff does as well, just to, if they're part of this. We've got so, a fabulous staff. And uh, a shout out to every one of them uh, because I know they're, they're, this is a job where you've got to just live aloha and live with a lot Absolutely. of love for your yep. clients. So I'm uh, sad to say we are out of time today, so we're going to have to wrap it up here. Um, I look forward to you coming back after your vacation sometime. And, uh, and <laughs> Just or, let me know. I'll be or, glad or, to. And work, yes. So anyway, I am Winston Welch. This has been a very special edition of Out and About on ThinkTech Live Streaming Network Series. We've been talking with Gary Powell, Executive Director of the Caregiver Foundation, very special organization that's doing a lot of good in our community. If it's not in your home state or city, maybe you can talk to Gary about founding something there, but that's probably its own can of worms. But we'll explore that next time when we have Gary on here. Thanks for tuning in. We welcome your feedback. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, uh, Ian uh, Davidson. Uh, actually, no, it's, uh, it's Robert McLean today. <laughs> our floor manager, Eric Kalander, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who puts it all together. We are carrying out our campaign. So if you love this show, give some money to... Think Tech Hawaii and say Winston sent you. I'll see you every other Monday here at 3 p.m. Thanks, everybody, and aloha.